You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramah Bishim Israel 5780, 2020. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Pinchas, and there are a number of topics in the Parsha. I'd like to focus specifically towards the end of the Parsha. We have the Karbonis, the sacrifices which are bought by the, brought by the Jewish people to the base of English, to the Temple, and the Mishkan, in its time, the Tabernacle. And specifically, I would like to focus in on Shmini Atzeres. You know, we have an unusual thing. Usually when we think about Chag, we know Pesach is seven days. We know the concept of seven has to do with the idea of the days of the week. We have seven days in a week. And when it comes to Shmini Atzeres, when it comes to Sukkot, so we have an unusual thing, and that is that instead of there being only seven days, instead of it being only a seven-day Chag, there's an eighth day. And... There's a whole medrash, I'm not going to get into it, but really that eighth day should be a different time. But HaKadosh Baruch who wanted us to stay with him, so to speak, and therefore the eighth day is indeed after the seven days of the Chag, after the seven days of Sukkot, which is the holiday that we will be celebrating in just about two months' time. Is that correct? Here we are, we're in the middle of Tammuz Av, I'm sorry, three months' time. So the Chag has an unusual aspect to it, it has this eighth day. Now what is the concept of the eighth day? It's called an atzeres. We're going to see what is the concept of atzeres, what is the idea of the eighth day. Let's see. Pasuk says to us like this, Bayom HaShmini Atzeres. On the eighth day, so this is an atzeres. Now, on Sukkot, if we look at the Karbonis, read the Sukkot carefully, so we find an amazing thing. On each of the days of Sukkot, we bring a certain amount of bulls among the other carbonists, the other sacrifices that are brought. First day we bring 13 bulls, second day 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, and then on day number 8, we go down, we skip down to 1. Okay, it goes from 13 down to 7, and then it skips from 7 down to 1. What is the concept here? If you count down 13, you add it up, 13 plus 12 plus 11 plus 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7, you end up with 70. And then you have the single bull, which is brought on the last day of the Chag, the last day of Sukkot. Now, what is the concept? Pasuk says in Psalms chapter 101, verse 4, King David says, in, in place of my love, instead of my love, they hate me, and I am prayer. What is the idea that instead of love, we are hated? At as we said, the Mezhish tells us that the Jewish people bring 70 korbanos, they bring 70 sacrifices, 70 bulls, which correspond to the 70 nations. If you look in the verses in Bereshus and Genesis that speak about the children of Noah and all of the nations that came from him, there are 70 nations. And indeed, we also find that there are 70 individuals in the Jewish people when Yaakov came down to Mitzrayim, corresponding to that. Let's not think about that for a moment. The Shivan Parim, these 70 bulls are brought as sacrifices in order to atone on behalf of the 70 nations. The Jewish people say to God, Master of the world, we bring these 70 sacrifices in order to indeed atone for them. The nations of the world should love us. They should, you know, they should be, they should just be Excited whenever we walk in the door. Him saying, my son, well, what's the truth? This one wants to destroy us. That one wants to kill us. Shunemar, tachas avos yistununi. They hate us. Instead of my love for them, instead of what we do for the for the nations of the world, what we sacrifice, so to speak, for the nations of the world, instead they hate us. They don't look at all of our contributions, whether we're talking about physical contributions or we're talking about spiritual contributions. And therefore Hashem says, Okay, you know what? You've done on behalf of them. They don't appreciate it. But now I want you on the eighth day to bring a special korban on your own behalf. On the eighth day, so you will have a day of atzeres. It's for you. It's for you. It's on your own behalf. So you bring one bull, one ram, what is the concept? So the Medrash here brings a mushal, 
which is an identical, almost identical mashal that you find in the Gemara in Sukkah, and I'm going to read to you there a marsha. Amazing, amazing marsha. The measure says like this, Mashal HaMelech She'asa Suda Shiva Siyamim. There was a king, it's a par- parable to a king, comparable to a king, who he made a suda, he made a meal for all of his servants for seven days. He invited all of the people of his country to come during those seven days of this party. Once the seven days passed, the king had one person who he loved, who was his special confidant, was his close minister, whatever the relationship was, whatever it was about, it's not important. But there was one person that the king loved, and he said to him, let everyone go, and I'm going to have a little meal with just you, just me and you. The whole party's over. You know, we'll, we'll, have, we'll enjoy each other, whatever we find. There's not really too much left from the party. Everyone ate up all the food. But a little bit of meat, a shodag, a yerek, a little bit of fish, a little bit of vegetables, whatever we find. In the same way Hashem says to the Jewish people, I don't need the big fancy korbanas. All those korbanas that you brought on behalf of the nations of the world, those hundreds of korbanas, I don't need them. I just need you. You bring whatever you find. Bring me one, one bull, one ram. That's going to be enough. Okay? So now, what is the concept here? What is the idea here? What is this coming to teach us? What is the depth of this teaching? Okay, that's the Medrash. So I'd like to share with you the Marsha. The Marsha is amazing. Amazing Marsha. Also very interesting. One of the things that we find, just getting at this Gemara in Sukkot, one of the things that we find on Sukkot, very unusual, very interesting, that the Haftaras that we read on Sukkot, when we read from the Nevi'im, from the Prophets, so we read about, whenever we read from the Prophets, usually it has something to do with the topic at hand. For instance, this past week, we read Parshas Balak, and we saw in the Navi, there was a mention of Bilam, what Bilam had tried to do, and uh, the Jewish people coming into the land of Israel, etc. So it's connected to the Parsha. The Aftara on Sukkot talks about the War of Gog Magog. speaks about the the... Uh, cataclysmic war that's going to take place in the end of times two parts of which we've already experienced as we talked about in the Mashiach podcast but what is the idea why do we say why do we read from the Haftorah about Gog and Magog during Sukkot so the Mishnah Bura tells us that the reason is because the war of Gog and Magog is going to happen during this time so Sukkot when we're talking about Sukkot that's a topic here the 70 Umois they come and they they fight their war, whether it's to stop us from coming to Eretz Yisrael, from Yushalayim, etc., or whether it's some kind of cataclysmic war, as is described in the Gemara and Yuma on Daf Yud, between Yishmael and Asa, between the West and, and the Arab nations. There's a, there's a cataclysmic war. Sukkot is a special time, a unique time, when every, the Kaychis the, the of the Umas Ha'olam, the power the, that's ingrained in the nations of the world, it comes and it needs to be, we need a kapara. What is the idea of a kapara? What is the idea of bringing a carbonus on their behalf? It means that there's a kitrik, there's some negative spiritual force that comes out against them that needs to be atoned for. It comes out in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What exactly is the idea behind that? So I'd like to share with you this amazing marshal. He says like this, Hani Shivim Parim Neged Shivim Umais, as we mentioned, the 70 bulls correspond to the 70 nations. The Isabi Medrash, the Medrash says, the Lekach Pachsin Ahoich Halchin. Why do we start with 13? Which, by the way, as is mentioned in the fortune of the Medrash, 13 is the word Echad, because what was the idea behind that? I'm forgetting. The idea it starts with 13, the Ramosh, I see them Kulam Lekrev Shem Hashem, Ula Avishchem Echad, Ula Yachadoi. Because in the end of time, all of the nations are going to call out in the name of God. There's going to be a unity. All of them will come and they will call out in the name of God. They will serve God together. Okay, so it starts off with the number 13. The gematria of the word Echad. What happens next? So it starts off with 13. And then it goes down to 12, down to 11, down to 10, 
That there is something that happened in Sukkot's time. And really, in truth, throughout all of history. And perhaps we're seeing a major part of it now as we come closer and closer to the moment that we've all been waiting for. They lose their power. They get weaker and weaker. Bechol Uma says something amazing, so interesting. Bechol Uma Yeshla Sahar Milmala. Every single nation has a malach, has a, a prince appointed uh, over it, a, a, an angel, a protective angel. A nation, it loses its power in this world, it falls when its own, every time it, a nation falls, first, the first to fall is its angel, its protective angel. Amar. Okay, so the idea is that the power is going down. The power of the Umais are going down. That's the idea. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Amar par yechidi neged What is that unique power? What is that single bull for? It corresponds to the unique nation. That's the Jewish nation. Are we one of the 70 nations? No, we're not. There's a Bahir, which I've read in the past. Bahir talks about actually 72 nations. We are the 71st nation. We are the spirit, the soul, the Yetzir Tov of the world, the Jewish nation. We are the ones who inspire the world with the knowledge of one God. And there's the 72nd nation, which is the nation of Amalek, which inspires the world with evil, which we find to have been the case in, uh, in, uh, in the times of Tanakh, in the times of the Torah. So in the story of Mordechai and Esther, Haman, he was from Amalek, and he possessed the nation of Persia, which what we call Iran today, in order to try to get them to destroy the entire Jewish people. We saw a similar thing occur in Europe with Germans. Right? But the Jewish people, so the Amalek is the 72nd uh, nation. It's the spiritual side, the Yetzirah of the world. The Jewish people are the Yetzirah Tov of the world. So this Parichidi, this un- unique bull, is brought, Neged Uma Yechida, Yechidi, they are the ones who are the portion of God. Like we say on, on Shabbos, you are one, your nation is one. Who is, who is, I'm sorry, you are one, your name is one. Who is like your nation? Who is a singular nation in the world? Okay, so we have all the nations of the world. They are going to be brought down. Sukkot is a special time when there's a special din of, of that nature. And the result is what? The spiritual aspect. The Jewish people who are the soul of the world. They remain. And who is our Sar? Who is our angel, so to speak? We don't have an angel. God is our protector. Directly. So we said in the Medrash that on the last day, so we have this, we have this king, and he waits for the last day in order to provide for his special beloved one, a special party. What's the Yom Acharon on the last day? It says the Marsha, it's a, it's a hint. It's a hint to the future time for when Mashiach comes. When all of the nations of the world, they come to an end. They lose their power. So the Jewish people will still be left We'll be there to make a special meal. God will make a special meal with us. Hashem says, so that I can enjoy you. Who gets the, the power? Who gets the enjoyment from the su'uda? From the bulls that are brought on their behalf? From the, from the accomplishments of the Umas Ha'olam, from the nations of the world? So it is specifically Ella. It's their, it's their angels, it's their ministering angels. Hashem doesn't get any enjoyment from them. The Sudasan he. Sorry, I skipped a line. What did they lose? What's been lost? Now that they don't have a Beis HaMikdash, they've lost this world. Because when the Beis Hamikdash is theirs, so then it's Machaper, it atones for their sins. 
Al Yisrael loy Amar Sh'avdu. The Jewish people doesn't say anything about the fact we don't have a base Amigdash. We've lost something, right? We don't have that that last that last korban. The Sudas and Hula Elam Haba. The Yoiser, I'm sorry, well Loy Amar Sh'avdu the Sudas and Hila Elam Haba because their Suda is in the world to come. The Yoiser near the Farish, the Zaisa Suda Kitana Bishmini at Seris Negri Israel by the Maze. There's a special thing that only the Jewish people has and that nobody else has. And that is, even in this world, not just in the world to come, but even in this world, the joy that the Jewish people have, we have a unique joy that nobody else has. And that is that in this world, and also, of course, in the next world, we enjoy this unique relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with God. So we're the only ones who truly experience through Shabbos, through mitzvahs, through korbanos, through, I mean, we don't have that today, but through, through all of the, the 613 commands that we fulfill, the relationship that we have with Hashem, we experience HaKadosh Baruch Hu in a unique way that the, the nations of the world will only experience in the future. Only when Hashem's name is one, us this God Simchal Yisrael. So then, the true, right, we have a semblance of that future joy. We have a semblance of it. We have a taste of it. But when Hashem's name is one, we have the Yisa Ach Samech, we have a bit of Simcha. But that joy is going to be even greater when we come to the, to, to the, to the revelation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. K'mash HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Arvi P'sachim. Asen HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Lasa Yisuda Gedoy Lo Dezara Shal Yitzchak. Hashem is going to create, He's going to make a, a tremendous, uh, joyous meal for the seed of Isaac. So we the the Jewish people are going to uniquely have access to that Suda Gedoyla. Okay, we have the number 70. We have the 70 nations of the world. We have the Jewish people who are the spirit, the soul of that, of that 70. Right? The number 70 is really seven times 10. Really, 70, you could say, even divided into 10. Each of those seven parts is divided into 10, so you have 70 parts. That's the nations of the world. The Jewish people are the, the eighth aspect. The seven, excuse me, going on to eight, the, the higher aspect. We are the soul of the world. And so we have a unique experience on the eighth day of the Chag where we bring that par yichidi. You have lots and lots of pieces, lots and lots of pieces all of the pieces get smaller and smaller and smaller. The soul always remains. The Jewish people always remains. Despite all of the nations who have tried to destroy us, despite all of the forced conversions, whether it was to Christianity or Islam, or wherever, whatever it was, still we remain as a testament to the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has one chosen nation, Goy Echad Ba'aretz, one nation in the land, Am Echad, one nation, and that is the Jewish people, who remain the soul of the world, continuing to inspire, continuing to infuse the world with a unique awareness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. From where does it come? I think we can see from the Marsha, it comes from the Simcha, this incredible joy that we experience, a special joy, because we know that we're the ones who are the chosen nation of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we're the ones who have that unique experience of God that no other nation has if they have it. They have it because they've tried to copy some aspect of Yiddishkeit. They've tried to copy some mitzvahs that we do, some commandments that we fulfill, whatever it is, whatever the idea is, but they have it secondarily. We are the soul. We are the soul of the world. So Hashem says, you are the ones who will remain for all time. And it doesn't mean that the nations will be destroyed completely. It means that their power, their their uh the fact that they rule over the world, the fact that the West rules or that the Arab world rules, those are illusions that as we get closer and closer to the time of Sukkot, we're going to see stronger and stronger. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is bringing that day of Gagu Magig. What is the concept of Gagu Magig? It's the destruction of the Umas Ailam. Those who would say that we have the power, those who come upon Jerusalem, those who come and say, we are. what is Jerusalem, Yishalayim? Is the source of spirituality. It's the place of the Evan Hashtia. The Dome of the Rock sits on a special rock. It's the rock that God used to create the whole physical world. What does that mean? It means that that's the center of the physical world and the spiritual world. And as long as there's a dome on that rock, 
So it means that the Jewish people aren't recognized that we are the ones who are the soul. Someone else claims to be the soul. The, the cho- Hashem took away the chosenness of the Jewish people, gave it to somebody else. Chas v'shalom, heaven forbid. That's what the fight is about. Who gets the soul? Who gets the soul of the world? That's what Iran wants to claim. They want to destroy us. Why? Why are they so intent on it? It's a spiritual idea. They want to destroy us. But when does it all end? The story ends on Sukkot. That's why we read about Goygumogog on Sukkot. And, and what, is the, what is the idea? The idea is, who is left? Who is left after all of the Madre, Venoflu Kal Madregus, all of the levels come down, all of the steps come down, all of the, the noise, all of the explosions, everything is heard. Who is left? Kal Yisrael is left. The Jewish people are left. After the whole Su'ud, Hashem says, I'm not interested. I'm not so interested in all of their, all of these 70 parim, all the 70 bulls. I just want me and you. Just me and you at the end. That's what it's about. So I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us to recognize who we are as Jewish people. What is our role in the world? What is our goal? To be the soul of the world. To be those who inspire others spiritually. To be those who inspire those around us spiritually. To be those who, indeed, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Hashem should help us to be the ones who He says, I want to have this special, unique relationship just with you. I want to have this special su'uda just with you. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos.